Okay, this is just a puppy pad with leftover paint, and I'm just showing you how I slide it off my table onto something flat to move it to another table so you don't mess up your pour with the puppy pad caving in on you, so just slide it onto something flat. This is my second experiment with the Arteza 32 count pour paints that are pre-mixed in two ounce bottles. There's two blacks, four whites, four metallics, six neons, and the rest are just regular colors. And uh, so I'm starting on my next experiment. This time I want to do a dirty pour, but instead of putting the bottles into you know, separate cups and adding OGX, which I like to use, I'm going to just insert a drop or two of OGX in a few of the layers. So I'm just pouring straight paint, white, coral, bronze, kind of a sea foam color. I'm sorry, the first color was a gray. There's the OGX Coconut Milk anti breakage Hair Serum. I put some in a dropper bottle because I only want one drop at a time. You would never need a full pump of the hair product. Now I'm going to use the uh, teal color and then the white. And I'm just shooting it down into the cup. This is what you call a traditional dirty pour. So I'm just switching the layers, another drop of OGX. a couple of plastic containers with some paints that are, I'm just going to put my album on and the album is taped on the other side to keep the hole from letting the paint flow through in the center. This is the first time I poured on an album and uh, it did fine. It did great as far as uh, being level and drying clear, that kind of thing. So I may make a clock out of it. I usually like to take a push pin and poke a couple of holes in the cup and that releases the pressure and the paint from sticking on the bottom of the cup. And immediately the colors look really bright and vivid and I love it. But as in the previous video that was my first experiment with the Arteza pour paints, they dry much deeper. Just popping air bubbles, the heat gun or heat torch does not really provide cells in my opinion. Um, I just do that to get the, rid of the air bubbles. I like with OGX to just put it aside and let it sit, but of course this was just a drop between two different layers of colors. It wasn't in all the colors like I typically do and stir it in. These were a pack of wooden palettes that I got, uh, paint palettes that I got on Amazon, like a multi-pack, and I taped the bottom side with frog tape. This is Helmar Silicone Spray H4000. Uh, Chad Booth in one of my groups uses it, and um, because it's a spray, I wanted to try spraying something into the paint this time. He makes the most beautiful cells and it didn't make the most beautiful cells in this video but I think it's all because of the paint that the pour paint. I think it's just way 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 too fluid and uh, I will definitely go back to my normal paint to uh, flow trial recipe one to one. I love Arteza acrylic paints. They're rich and thick and creamy, but the pour paints are just too fluid. And as you will discover, they dry really, really dark. I didn't even pour out the whole five ounce cup of paint there. But that one I put a spray of the Helmar silicone in, in a couple of different layers. And so it had some little cells that popped up, but, and the colors are beautiful right now because they're wet but they dry super dark. Pop in the air bubbles. With an odd shape, you've got to keep in consideration, you know, the hole there and 
as you can see when you put your finger into paint and smear it it's going to go automatically to a mud color brown gray so just keep that in mind I was basically just putting some paint on the wood this was made out of maybe birch and it was pretty solid and I had no warping or anything like that and I did not pre-prime it or anything and uh, I was really pleasantly surprised at how well it took the paint and like I said no warping or anything like I've had I've had warping with wood that's an inch thick and I couldn't believe it warped so I was pleasantly surprised on this one so as you see to my right hand side where the hole is there's a lot of a mud color there it just these colors just really muddied up extremely quickly if I had done this pour I think with the traditional acrylic colors my paint to flow troll ratio I think I would have had a very stunning piece here it still looked neat when it dried and of course these pour paints do not have silicone or anything in them they're just pre-mixed and ready to pour but you're not going to get cells just from the bottled paints that's why I did add the Helmar silicone spray in and the OGX on the record pour so I'm just trying to add a little bit of color here because it's so drab trying to cover up a little bit mud area and you're not going to get cells because there's no silicone or anything in these paints and that black area I just wanted to put a little punch of color attempted to do that with the balloon smash coming up here and it totally didn't show up <laughs> so I my go-to is a straw if I want to pull out color I use my straw and it dries significantly darker there you can see how bold it actually looks right now but you're going to see here in a minute the dried piece I did put frog tape on the underside of that though because I am going to resin this piece just to help bring out a little bit more color I have someone that's interested in it and um, so frog tape is amazing it's the green wide tape and it's just amazing for the underside of your pieces and here's the dried piece you see how dark it is I had a little leftover paint in the cup and I'm just pouring it on a 5 by 7 canvas panel and just this is some you know you can take a little of the stuff off your table and as you see it turns to mud but it wets your canvas and uh, gives it something to slide over at least so this was the leftover spray that did have the Helmar spray a few times in the layers but like I said I, I didn't mix it into my cups of color like I traditionally would do what you know when I mix my own colors so it's just more difficult when you're pouring straight out of a paint pour bottle that's pre-mixed I just really didn't care for the experience at all and I love Arteza acrylics and here's the uh, the record that's been sitting while I worked on that piece and the cells have grown a little bit from the couple of drops that were put into the cup when I was pouring the layers of color in and again this was like coral a sea foam a gray a teal color and a bronze and you see how blah it looks <laughs> it's it's serene looking I can say that it's serene and soft looking And I'm notorious for doing rainbow colors so it's nice to just step out of your comfort zone every so often I really enjoyed on the last video doing the black and white pour just because I'm so used to doing colors but there it is and it's soft and serene looking I 
I like to run my finger along the bottom edges of canvases or anything I'm pouring on and that helps your paint not fall over the edge and be pulled off and drag more of your paint off the surface. It's ju it just helps a little bit to do that. So that's why people do like to run their fingers on the bottom side of objects or canvases. And you always, you know, keep it raised off the table, obviously, so you don't have it laying in a puddle of paint that sticks to the bottom. I had a little bit left in the cup, and I put it on a corner of my puppy pad and stuck that on a piece of cardboard. Because I thought those colors would be really pretty in a piece or two of jewelry that maybe matched. So that's what I'm doing with this leftover paint. I try to save my puddles as much as I can if they haven't turned to mud to do things like this and I keep a Tupperware bin full of them and I could get you know a necklace and earrings and a ring maybe out of that. The great thing about puppy pads is if they're not pretty you just roll them up and dispense of them. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that helped you. I, again, will go back to my typical recipe of one-to-one -one paint to flow trawl. I'm just way more pleased with mixing my own colors. There's just more power and more color with that. They dry more true to the colors. The only one I cared for really out of this whole Arteza pour paint batch was the black and white. It dried naturally. Um, and the record, it was soft muted tones, soft color, so it dried soft. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. And here's the finished picture of the, uh, the album. So it, it didn't change too much.